Welcome to STJFL under 16.5 boys grand final action. It's the replay this week. It's between Clarence and North Hobart. My name's Bo Downham. It's an absolute pleasure to have you tuning in live from Duff TV. Next to me in the commentary box again is Jason Berry. Jace, thanks for uh, coming along again this week. Thanks, uh, Bo. A bit of deja vu about today, isn't there? It's, um, it's exciting to be here, North Hobart Oval. Same two teams and similar sort of day, isn't it? It's a... The sun's sort of going down now. It's quite mild out there. It's been a nice day. And those North Hobart boys look fantastic as they enter the ground for the first time today. Absolutely. So we got Evans, Bricknell, Cunningham, Hall, Carmichael, Willsmore, Moles, Barwick, Natasha, Lang, Full Slang, Devine, Scott, Volta, Hooker, McMullen, Johnson, Croswell, Flat, Pamplin, Howes, Quinn, and Bowlesley is your emergency for the days today. So you can see them running through their warm-ups. Jace. They're looking focused today, aren't they? I look forward to watching what they can produce on the big stage again. We had, we were saying probably five or 600 people here last week, but I reckon we're edging up there again today. A nice little crowd rolling in, people finishing work and making their way into North Hobart Oval. It's, it's a great place to be around a football stadium when, it's, when there's a game on, isn't there? You can see the cars trying to get parks and people moving into the ground and yeah, rugged up, ready to go for a, what should be a really good game of football tonight. Looking forward to this one. Of course, no charge either if you uh, you want to head down quickly. It's pretty sure it's free entry or a gold coin donation, one of the two. So get down if you can or if you, you can't, just listen to our beautiful commentary throughout the night. We're going to have you covered on all aspects of the game. So we'll head back off and we'll run through the uh, Clarence team shortly. Now we see the Clarence Ruse about to run up. The banner will come up shortly. Interesting talking point, Jace. It's actually a Clarence home ground final. North Hobart is obviously their home ground, but Clarence have got the home final rights as we see them run through the banner. Happy to play anywhere for a grand final, I reckon those Clarence boys. They look pumped and ready to go. So the Clarence boys are reading through from the top of the list. We've got Hay, Palmer, Mitchell, Bull, Speed, Goodwin, McCallum, Garrett, Kelly, Millwood, Philpott, Winch, Watkins, Marshall, Marriott, Crossan, Fitzgerald, Bounds, Vincent, Whitelaw, Curtin, Rand, Dawson and... Rand Dawson and Michaelowski as the three emergencies 
for the Clarence side. Beautiful conditions out here. For STJ AFL under 16.5 boys grand final action. It's a pretty mild as he said, but weather conditions shaping up to be like last week, of course. That game got cut off, so let's hope that the players doing fine and hopefully he's here today to see his team hopefully win for his sake. But I reckon down to the left hand side of the, the screen you can see the young gentleman that was injured last week in, in last week's game and it's it's great to see him here today, and it's fantastic to be back at the football tonight. It's a, it would have been a, another refocus for both teams. It's it's hard they got themselves up and about for the game, but there's a wheelchair on, on screen at the moment. I'm, I'm imagining that's maybe for the gentleman that was working on the crutches that was injured last week. Smiles on the face and lots of support around. Well, we we can't talked about last week after the injury happened on the on the field, the the support that was showed to both teams was really impressive, and I, I understand it was. Fairly hard time down the, in the rooms after. No one likes to see that sort of injury happen. So it is brilliant to see him here today. And it's brilliant to see both teams come back together again. Looking ready, refocused for today's STJFL. 16 and a half boys final between Clarence and North Hobart. Umpires are in place, ready for our opening ceremony with our welcome to country or acknowledgement of country. And then the and then the national anthem. So looking forward to this as the players move into position. Barwick's STJFL Grand Final. Under 16.5 boys between Clarence and North Hobart. We acknowledge the traditional owners of country across Australia on which we play our great game and pay respect to them, their culture and elders past and present. Would you now please rise and join with the players, coaches and umpires for the Australian National Anthem. So there it is, the national anthem. Second time around for these boys. Hopefully the nerves have settled. Obviously last week was a big occasion and now they're gonna do it all again. So let's see who can come out victorious. If I can remember correctly, it was a pretty hot start from Clarence last week, Jace. Ball was out of the out of the middle early and up into the forward pocket, and that's where it all ended last week. So let's get past that minute and twenty-six from last week and we're looking forward to a fantastic game. This is exciting. I'm a big Saints supporter, Bo, and I, I remember with not much fondness the last time I saw a replay of Grand Final, which was St Kilda being smashed by Collingwood. So let's hope for a little bit better than that today. Let's hope for a little bit more fight. I was pretty happy with that Grand Final. Well, of course, of course. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought it up. So both teams in their huddles now. 
final minutes of their season. It's been a really good season for the Roos. I'm pretty sure they finished on top of the ladder. And I think North Hobart finished third or, or around about there. So it's going to be a cracking grand final. The top three best teams of the year are going to face off here. At the top, North Hobart top Oval. Three, though, top I think three. so. Oh. So we've Two of the top three teams, I should say, Chase. It would have made it a more interesting game with three of them playing, though, yeah. I reckon, but, um, Clarence, I think, lost one throughout this year, so they've been in good form. Both teams have been in good form. Those, the centre lines look to be a really interesting um, place to start this, this day. I'm looking for Jasper Hay making his way to the middle. It doesn't look like he's there at the moment. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, he is. Jasper Hay in the centre there, so... Jasper Hay, who we may have even got to mention in the first minute and 26 last week, was a, an All-Australian basketball representative chosen in the All-Australian under-16 AFL team. So a good chance to, to really stake his, his claim today and continue what's been a really fantastic season. So umpires looking around, 6-6-6, looks in order. Game looks ready to start, though. This is exciting, exciting for you and I, exciting for everyone in the audience and probably more exciting for these players to be able to redo this today. Umpire on the mic is Keaton Atkins. So he'll be taking you through the course of the night with his umpiring decisions. Question for you, Bo, without notice. They're going the same way as last time. Was that pre-arranged from last game? Oh, well, I think they did the coin toss. Oh, they did. Here we go. First ball toss of the... 2023 under 16 and a half boys final a nice start just there picked up well by Darcy Goodwin moves the ball forward similar how did this game started last week hands off from North Hobart they look in board it's a nice tackle just there on a player number 33 Will Croswell from North Hobart ball bobbing around it's a tight contest so far by certainly it's gone back into that pocket where it was last week I think this might be See another ball up here to Shara and the other Ackman couldn't quite bring it down. It was McCallum in there. Quick kick out of the pack. They're going to go inside forward 50 or near the goal face, I should say. Speed's going to get that one. A nice little clearance just there by Zach Bounds. I've seen a fair bit of Zach Bounds playing over the years. It's a very quick little sentiment at the moment. He's going around in number 51 for Clarence. Just a nice clearance out to that forward pocket. Didn't hit a player, but just kept that ball mo moving forward. And I think on a grand final day, you'd hope to see that, just ball moving forward. So speed's going to line up for the first one of the night. It's not going to register a score. Bringing it back in is Devine for the Demons. He's going to go to that outer wing. Looking for a teammate. Nice mark taken there from Cunningham. Skipper Cunningham, yeah. Cunningham goes up along the wing closest to us. Nice strong mark taken in front by Jasper Hay. Strong hands. Looks in board. Up to the top of the 50. It's two on two. Clarence player leading them out in player number 32. It's Darcy Goodwin. Been prominent early and ball drifts out of bounds in the Banjo's Bakery pocket. 25 metres out from the Clarence goal. They've had a strong start. Haven't been able to hurt them on the scoreboard in the first two minutes. Understandable. Hands out. Congested ball. Ball moves out. Nice clearance just there. By Flack. Ball moves forward over on the far wing. So, quick hand pass there was from Watkins. They're going to get a hurried kick out. Inside forward 50. Pack forms. Failing to pick that one up there was McCallum. Nifty little tap out was good. Tashara has... Winch in a tackle, and we'll see another ball up on the eve of the forward 50 for the Roos. So Deshara and Hay going to do ruck battle. Hay gets the first tap down, bursting through there was Winch. He's taken, failing to pick that one up there was Volta. He's taken in a strong tackle. Whitelaw has him for company. Volta has been a, an had an impressive season from what I understand. Strong midfielder from North Hobart, and that's a nice clearance just there. They look to move the ball forward, but again, Hay is in the way of this one. Gets her hands out the back, looks inboard. One-on-one -on -one contest here, but a nice mark taken in front from North Hobart and Flack. He's had three or four possessions already. Bowie's looks solid, he goes straight up the guts, looks to the top of the 50. North Hobart players in front, but a strong mark behind then by Philpott. 
Looks over across to the wing and finds a player free. That would be Bounds out wide. Bounds has a player running past. He ignores him. Goes up to the forward 50. Strong mark taken just then on his chest by Speed. Takes him on. Looks around. Goes inside 50. Hits that hot spot directly in front. Off hands though and a nice clearance again. Croswell it was that time. Finds a player free. So finds his teammate. Might be Johnson, it will be. He's going to kick it out to Jed Bricknell. So, not too many options moving for him down the line. Eventually one presents itself, and it's going to be a mark taken there from Devine. He's going to play on through that outer wing. Kick's going to be cut off there from Jasper Hay. So Hay, through the middle of North Hobart Oval. The kick's not going to work out just quite yet. Through the hands of Moles. Now they're going to go here, the ruse. Speed's going to meet the ball first. Gonna hurriedly pick it up, he's taken by two. You know, so you're holding the ball free kick. It's a lovely tackle, two on one. Yeah. North Hobart in the middle just then had three players against one, just off hands. Clarence made the most of that and moved the ball forward, but no damage done to the scoreboard. So the ball goes out of bounds, 60 out from Clarence's goal. Forward possession for Clarence at the moment, I think they probably have 97% of the ball in their forward 50 at the moment, or forward half. They've looked, looked strong, they've been off to a good start, and they'll be hoping to put some scoreboard pressure. Hay moves his way in front, gets the hands off, but only as far as our North Hobart player. One-on-one -on -one contest just there. Play, player 36 for Clarence. Gets the hands out. Looks across, Hay again. Goes backwards before they move forward. One-on-one -on -one contest there. It's Clarence picking it up. Top of the square. And Clarence in a fantastic position. Brody speed. Plays on, goes around the body, and Speed makes no mistake and kicks the first one of today's clash. Jeezy looks conf looked confident with the ball just then, Bo. Certainly did, did. Didn't waste any time around the body. Strong mark around the body and goal. Pretty sure he's a, a desert, Tassie Devils player, Brody Speed, in the under-16 division. So one, back, he's a class operator, and you can see there, just got a bit of a... Room on his opponent Pamplin on that occasion and uh, didn't even hesitate to go for the drop punt, just snapped it around the body, Jace. Makes no mistake, no times for the nerves to kick in if you're going to do that around the body, is there? Ball up back to the middle. Hay looks down, finds bounds in the middle. This will be a secondary ball up. Ball back to the umpire just then. So Hay's been dominant in the ruck so far. Gets his hand on the ball. Strong contributor again, looks to bounce. So a nice little combination they've got forward. And they find that man again. Goes around the body, a little bit unorthodox that time, and he misses the player. And that's Moles, playing at full back, looks to the left. No one out that way, so goes back to the far wing. This ball looks like it's going to trickle out of bounds just in front of Rex Johnson for North Hobart. Umpires picked something out just here. Maybe a deliberate out of bounds, was it? I missed that one. Clarence again, pound the ball in forward. Moles again. Takes them on. This time safely inside of the boundary line. Hands off just there. So, being caught in that tackle there was Devine. We're going to see another ball up here. Jasper Hay and Tashara are going to do battle in the ruck. There's a bit of a height difference in this ruck contest. It's going to be a blocking free kick to Jasper Hay. Going to drive one inside forward 50. The two number 40s go at it. I should say Moles and number 40... Millwood, Moles, collects, gets the hand pass away, and now the link of hand pass. McMullen drives it down the field. Nice mark, nearly taken there. Off the hands of a few, they can't quite pick it up just yet. Curtin providing a good little shepherd, Watkins, and just going to send it to grass. It's going to end up the back there. Running onto that one is Whitelaw. Shapes the goals up. Speed's going to have to do a little bit of nifty work. Collects the ball and he's going to be rewarded holding the, the football there. Does Croswell. So again in that back pocket, North Hobart. Defence are doing a really good job just holding on here. Trying to withdraw this. With strand, withstand, sorry, the storm that's coming through. There's Tashara. Gets a little bit open space just then on Hay. Ball goes to a 50-50 contest. Leo Hooker for North Hobart's putting pressure on, but nicely collected just there. Beautiful pick up by Mitchell. Finds a player free in Curtin. Looks towards that boundary line. Smartly done. Four and one out there.
Clarence with the numbers and the ball is just going to drift out of bounds, out of the reach of Mitchell. Just a slight adjustment of the shoe. It's an interesting stat that just came up on the board. Three inside 50s to nine. No. <laughs> Probably the other way around, I reckon. The wrong, didn't look quite right. I think it's been 27 inside 50 to zero so far. North Hobart looking to get the ball off the bottom of the pack just here. We knew and we've heard that Clarence were going to come out strong, so North Hobart have done a good job with standing this so far. Let's see if they can get this first goal on the board to put a bit of scoreboard pressure back onto Clarence. Hey, with a fair bit of height in that ruck contest, umpire will have this one back here for a secondary ball up. It's going to be Deshara and Hay. Hay with a clear height advantage. It's going to tap it out only as far as that man Volta. Shrugs around a few. Doesn't have that much support on, so he's going to have to do it himself. Tashara, his mark was hindered with, but umpire sees it as a mark. Cunningham's going to drill it inside forward 50. Leading out there is Barwick. He's going to line up for goal number one for himself and his team. Currently 117 to 000. zero zero. You can look on the Mood Food replay here. It's a nice kick, a nice vision there from Cunningham, and Barwick takes a nice mark. So he's going to line up for his first. He's going to meander in here. Sets himself up. Kick's going to go on its way. Barwick's going to get the first for North Hobart. And it's a one-point ball game, Jace. Very nice response from North Hobart there, wasn't it, Bo? They needed that one. It's funny, for all the dominance that Clarence have had so far, it's one point on the scoreboard. So it was an important goal. It was a really nice mark there, presented well in Barwick. A really smart kick just then. I really liked the way to, uh, Cunningham just then lowered his eyes. Clarence had dropped one back onto the goal line. So lowered his eyes, and you can see him just there, the Clarence player back on the goal line. Lowered his eyes and found North Hobart player in Barwick in a good position. Hay again. They're going to need to do something about this, but I don't know what. Gets his first hands on the ball. They're going to have to work around him because he's going to win a lot of taps. That was a really nice mark just there. Player number seven. And Carmichael looks in boards and he finds Ashara. The top of the 50, eyes darting around, doesn't have an option that he likes at the moment. There's a few presenting. He looks to a congested forward line. Four Clarence players go up with the ball. Hands off, nice hand in there, just then by Willsmore. And he's going to earn this ball back. It's a nice little interception by Willsmore. Didn't see what the free was for there, did you, Bo? We might have another look at that in the replay. That's one. So Willsmore gets a hand in there. Yeah. And contact. then hit a little bit high. Not a lot in it, but we've got to protect the player's head. So Willsmore will go back for his first of the night. And unbelievably, to put Demons, the North Hobart Demons in front. A nice approach. He goes back, and I think he's just drifted this one to the side. So one behind the Demons, so it's all tied up. Clarence 1-1-7, one, one, Demons 1-1-7. One, one, Good game so far. So we're going to see a ball drove inside, outside forward 50, pushing the back free kick's going to end up in the hands of Bradley Vincent. So as a runner, Alexa go to Curtin. Kick on the eve of the 50, presenting out well there is Millwood. Look to play on quickly. Drive one in the speed direction, but it's just going to land outside bounds. I haven't seen Bricknell play before, but those hands are fantastic. The way he lent back into that kick was really nice as well. A little bit drifted the offside a little bit, but a, a little bit of potential out there, I'd imagine. Good size on him. That ball drifts out of bounds, 15 metres out from the Clarence goal. He looks forward. What's the umpire going to do with here? He's calling it back, I believe. Attempt number two or three from this position. So, North Hobart pressed up in their forward 50. Kick was pretty dinky. Flack gets the hand pass away. Whitelaw roves. And again, it's a pretty hot footy early. Flack in and under. He's going to be taken in the tackle. So, about seven minutes to go in this game. Convincing tap down there was from McCallum. Hurried kick out from North Hobart. It's only going to end up as far as... I think that was the man Volta. Vol Volta, I believe. So Volta looks wide, uses the vast expanses of North Hobart over, but an unkind bounce just there. So very unlucky was Johnson that grabs the ball in the end and holds it up. Difficult bounce to, to judge just then on the wing closest to us. So we're 
past the halfway point of this first quarter. It's a good game so far. Scores obviously tied up. Tashara with, ha with hands out. Looks across, sees Bricknell, Volta there as well. And he's taken them on. Clarence umpire says nothing. It's play on. Nice little spin out of trouble there and maybe grabbed a little bit high. So a little bit high there was full sang. Took him on. A little spin out of trouble. And it goes back, cops one around the head for his trouble. So full sang on looking boards. Their forward entries have been all right so far, North Hobart. Again, similar. Looks to a really dangerous spot, but placing himself well was that Clarence player there struggling to see his number at the moment. He goes out wide. To the advantage out there of, it must be McCallum. Good bit of speed by McCallum. He takes them on. Just misses that final collection of the ball just then, but I like the speed and I like the termination he showed out on that far wing. So ball up. Inside 50 for the Ruse. Nice tap down was one from Lang. Hand pass out was good from Devine. And then we'll see being wrapped up with the ball is full saying again, I think it was. So another opportunity can present itself inside forward 50. That's where they're going to go. Marcus just through the hand of Millwood. Nearly crumbing that ball there was Kelly. And a hurried kick out of the fence there was Marchie Devine. So it's going to go tight across the boundary rope and eventually sees its way trickling out and uh, have another throw in. Of course, thanks to the sponsors of the STJ AFL Grand Finals, Barwick's Wholesale Retail and Landscape Supplies, IGA, your Hobart Health, Venice Petroleum, and of course, Brighton's Best Bakehouse as we go inside forward 50, failing to pick that one up there is Kelly again. Bounds. Millwood's in there. I'm seeing a uh, ball up. Bounds caught one around the head just then. I think the umpire has been fairly hot in that delivered out of bounds so far. There's two they've called out there on that far wing. Don't mind calling them a date. That's all right. It keeps the ball moving, keeps it in play and stops unnecessary ball ups. That was a nice effort by Tashara. North Hobart moved the ball forward. Off hands. Doesn't quite grab that one. The North Hobart player ball goes back. Nice bit of determination shown in there by Carmichael. Ball trickles out. North Hobart. North Hobart leading the race just here. This is Full Sang. He's got a one on one and he got, does well. He goes around, he looks inboard, he finds a good option. Just drops short of his teammate there in Willsmore. Willsmore holds that ball up and I think they'll be happy to see a ball going up here. You can see that inside 50 count has been evened up a, a little bit before. It was 9 to 1, it's 13 to 5 now. So North Hobart have had a bit of the ball in their control recently. Ball goes up to Shara V. Hay. That one's fairly even. I think it's going to trickle out of bounds just here. If not, it'll be another ball up. So we'll see those two young gentlemen, Tashara and Haig, up for this one again. Probably 25 metres out from the North Hobart goal. Hay decisively to bounds. He's thrown off the ball. Nice contest just here. Two on one. Looks across and sees Bricknell, who goes out wide. Volta turns around onto the left. Players up and in front. That was a fantastic mark by Barwick. He's causing some trouble up there. Played in front. Hands safely around the ball. You see just here. So Bricknell, hands out. To check numbers there, it may have been Volta. Same sort of body shape. And Barwick plays in front. Just worked his way in front of Hay. Just said didn't have the height on him, but had the body position and moved in front. He goes back looking for his second. And that is straight through the middle. And North Hobart take the lead. It's a six-point lead from North Hobart. Been dangerous when they've gone forward, and this man in particular. So he didn't have the height, but he had the body position, and he puts them in front by a goal. So North Hobart Demons. Will this be a sign for the Demons going forward tonight, do you think, for the... Melbourne Demons, you imagining, Bo? Who's going to win tonight's game of football oh, in the AFL? I hope it's Carlton, because I don't really want to verse Melbourne in the grand final for Collingwood if we make it. But It'd make it for a grand, good grand final, though, wouldn't it? It would. But focusing on this one here, Clarence need to capitalise going inside forward 50. We saw the ratio, 13 inside forward 50, so only two scoring shots. So that's something they're going to have to tidy up. Barwick's in there, Cunningham, scooped out in the end. On pursuit is Howes. He's going to dance around too. 
Kick into the middle of North Hobart. It was going to work out well to McMullen. McMullen looks inside forward 50 with that booming left foot kick. Where's it going to end up? Just off the hands of a few. Nifty little tap down was good from Mitchell. It's only going to end up as far as Bricknell and they're going to do it all again here, North Hobart. McMullen. Back to Bricknell. Nice chain of hands. Got his hand, uh, kick away, I should say. In the nick of time. Nice mark taken there from Carmichael. It's going to, or not, it's going to be reversed. First hands on the ball, maybe the Clarence player just then. Could have gone either way, though. The umpires have picked out a Clarence mark in a dangerous position. Straight up the middle just then. Finds Goodwin, who goes out wide. Looking across, he sees Brody Speed, who's been dangerous today, and he uses that. He uses his speed. Can he get around him? He's been grabbed, and that is a really nice tackle. Speed still with the ball, though. Dinky little kick is going to drift out of bounds just in front of Whitelaw. Great defensive work there from Harry Flack. Look at that determination on the chase there, Bo. He speed over. good enough to give it, him, give it back to himself, though, but just the little dinky kick, not quite there. Up the wing, it's going to fall just short. Again bursting through there was Goodwin, gets the hand pass away. Flax going to be taken in the tackle and we'll see a, another ball up here. So 20 seconds left. Can Clarence capitalise through this rough contest? It's going to take something pretty good. Zach Bounds going, going up for the ruck just there. No one's actually gone for that one. So the ball goes out. This could be enough for North Hobart to tie it up just here. Five or six seconds to go and that ball is going to drift out of bounds. Right on that wing. So, quarter time it is here at North Hobart Oval. Your goal kickers are Brody Speed for Clarence with the one. Miller Barg with two for North Hobart. And Jace, it was a pretty convincing uh, first quarter effort there from North Hobart, capitalising on their inside forward 50 count. Clarence had about 13 or 14 inside forward 50, so only two scoring shots. Yeah, so we, we give a bit of credit for the way that North Hobart moved the ball inside of their 50, but I think their defence stood up really well just then. Multiple looks for the Clarence forward line. So they'll, they'll work that out. I think Jasper Hay's been dominant today. He's been fantastic in the ruck. I think Tashara's battled really well so far. Um, but they're going to need to work out what to do around Hay in that ruck because the big men don't get any smaller on grand final days. We look at a few replays here on the screen at the moment. Nice hands just here. Looks inboard. This is Miller in front taking a nice mark. That's his first of two goals today, Miller Barwick. It was a nice link of hand passes from Tashara and Cunningham, so we'll leave you to watch the highlights. We'll come back for second quarter action up next. program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day.
Welcome back to second quarter action here. You can see that young man in the moon boot there. Pretty sure that's Oliver Talbot who injured his leg in the last game, of course. And that game coming to a halt. That's why we're playing it tonight. So let's hope that he's okay. It's great to see him out here supporting his team. Hopefully if they win, we'll get a medal. He certainly deserves it. He's carried himself like an absolute champ, Jace. It would be harsh not to, would it? A little a little hypothetical for you both. Clarence coach Adrian Goodwin was out there at half time, he's, quarter time. He's held on to them for another five or six minutes longer than North Hobart. What's he saying to them out there? Well, what would you be saying, Bo? I'd be saying we've got to capitalise on those inside 50s. We're peppering the goal face, or at least the inside 50 count, that whole first quarter. So if they can capitalise on that, we might just have a blowout, Jace. And how, how, are Clar how are North Hobart going to fight this dominance of Hay in the middle, I think? Yeah. Ball, ball goes on. A little bit of work needs to be done. Just having a look at what's happening out there. I think an umpire's picked out a, a free out there to our Clarence player. We might have missed that first. Looks like player number 51 and young Zach Bounds. Who, I want you to count how many times he's at the bottom of a pack tonight. But it'll be an interesting count. He's always around the mark. He's always at the bottom of the pack. Looks 25 metres out. Strong lead. You send in a strong mark. Jai Millwood. I mentioned him before. Really strong hands and I... I liked his kicking style last week. It was a little bit Kerno-esque. Just laid back on it. Let's have a look at this one. He finds that position. Was never going to drop that one. Looks strong. Good basketball hands. I don't know if he's a basketballer. We'll, make, we'll say that he is, though. Let's have a look at this approach. Moves in. He's probably 35 out. It's quite close to the man on the mark. Lays back and makes... No mistake of it. Clarence kicked the first of the next quarter. That is exactly what you would have told them to do, Bo, in that, for, that huddle before. Make the most of those forward 50 entries. There's one forward 50 entry for one goal. So they pick out the biggest man in the team. Mark strongly forward out and makes 40 out and makes no mistake of that, Millwood. So a nice kick to send from Bounds. Milled with strong hands up above his head. Goes back and kicks the goal, Bo. All right now. We're already seeing some patterns. We can see that the speed and Millwood are going to be the two most used targets in their inside forward 50 region. So if they can try and put some of those two, it's going to be difficult for them to, to score. But it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Hurry kick looks good from Cunningham. McMullen spilling what he probably should have got. Picks it up nicely. Missing the hand pass to Divine, but it's going to be a free kick to North Hobart to that man, Matthew McMullen. I think he plays cricket for North Hobart as well. He'll hand that one off. Cunningham inside forward 50 kick. Dangerous area just off the hands of Phil Pot there. 
Holding free kick to North Hobart. Looks like it's going to go the way of full saying here. To put the second goal of the second quarter on. North Hobart's third. So we'll see here the free kick on the Mood Food replay. I think it might have been a push in the back. So Oki full saying is going to line up for his first of the night. It's a steady approach. Nerves will be setting in now. He's going to stutter in. Kick on goal. It's going to make the distance and it's going to be accurate as well. Fulsain gets the first of the second quarter for the Ds. His first of the night. And it's currently 2-1-13 to 3-1-19. Thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, Jase. Didn't use any more energy than he needed to with that kick, did he? Just put it over a couple of centimetres over the, over the line. Goes back. A little bit of a stutter and puts that through just over the hand of the big ruckman there for Clarence. Number 42 that doesn't seem to be on our, our sheet just here. I don't know if that's a blood jumper and being replaced. Someone else in the middle there, we'll see. So he's back in the middle, hands off. Ball goes forward. Playing in front was North Hobart and seven in Carmichael. It's been good today. Tashara cops one around the head, hands out. Finds Goodwin who goes wide to the wing. Marriott leading the race but an unkind bounce and that's just going to drift out of bounds on the wing. I think it's going to be last touch. Is that the what they're ruler, playing today? So, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if that's true but I think it is. I don't think that was very deliberate so it must yeah. be the rule we're playing tonight. North Hobart look to move the ball forward again. It's a strong kick. Making good position just there. It's a big ruckman for Clarence. Goes forward. Nice attack on the ball just then by Croswell. Goes out. There's bounds again at the bottom of the pack. One on one contest just. So it's a nice bump just then by Speed. Pushes his opponent off the ball. And he shows the speed. He goes around. Check side. And he's just missed that goal. That was a nice approach just then. He's looked exciting every time the ball's gone forward just then. That is Brody Speed. Goes around, check side approach, and he's just gone short just then. So, to that outer wing, it's a nice pick up there. I think it might have been Croswell meeting it. it was Carmichael. See another tap on. Picking up his Ma uh, Marshall, I should say. He's going to drill one inside forward 50. Too hot, too hot to handle there from Whitelaw. And passes it off to Bounds, who drills it inside forward 50 to that man's speed. So Speed's going to line up for his second. It's going to take an almighty thump, but I reckon he might have it. We'll see on the Mood Food replay here. Just the leading pattern that he used on that occasion. He had a good five metres on his opponent. So Speed's going to dance around. Sell some candy lines up the goals. Brody Speed for his second. Hey. Just miss. Hey, one, two, three. one to the left, one to the right. Next one straight through the middle. He looks dangerous, doesn't he, Speed? I like him. Brody Speed takes his opponent on, has a shot, but just drifts across the face. Clarence trying to hold this ball inside. They set up well behind the ball. It's a nice approach just off hands just then from young Marshall. This ball's going to drift out of bounds. Throw it in this time. Who's up, boys? Who's up? Two straight up, one. Two straight up, the Ruckman nominate. Assuming that is Jasper Hay there in number 42. What are your thoughts on that, Bo? Could be. I would be surprised. He's had a lot of the ball already to start this quarter. Nice tackle just in by Bounds. And it's going to go his way. So he's been prolific so far, Bounds. He looks in board. That is a dangerous kick. But he picks out the Clarence play in a really strong position just there. So Clarence and Xavier Bull. Sorry, no, it's not. It is Toby Mitchell who has the ball in the middle. He said Bounds, Bounds has been excellent. You. Nice inside 50 there from Mitchell and a beautiful You're mark. Ready? Look at those strong hands. How He's do we right stop there. him today? That's what I'd be looking for. That's Mill with a game right with strong hands. Takes the ball at the highest point. He's done that a couple of times tonight. And a nice forward entry. So it's quite deliberate with the way they're moving the ball inside 50 here now, Bo. I think it might be Sammy Moles with the match up there for North Hobart on Millwood. It's going to take. Something special to stop him tonight. Millwood's going to go for goal. goal. Kicks on its way. You can hear it from umpire Keaton Aiken. Signals a goal. All clear. 
So he gets his first, I should say second of the night. Now Clarence hit the front by two points. 3-3-21 to 3-1-19 thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. See on the mood food replay there, just how steady his approach to the goal face is, Jace. I like the way that he moves, Bo. He's taken a couple of strong, maybe three strong marks there, three big pack marks. Converted a couple of those. So that was a nice tap out just then. Back to the middle one is Miller Barwick, who's moved into the ruck for a bit of a stint in there. Willsmore fights hard. Bottom of the pack just there is Captain Cunningham. It goes out again to Bounds, who again has been excellent. Bottom of the pack. Doesn't get this one out. And umpire calls for the ball. So we're assuming that's Jasper Hay there, who's changed tops from ch top number 13 to 42. That would make sense. Ball goes forward inside 50 for North Hobart. Clarence hold up strong. Only goes as far, though, as Cunningham. Ball goes out wide, 26, and Anthony Volta. Moves around just off target just then. It was a nice pick up and shot just then by Volta. And the ball has drifted over. Who's up? I thought over the behind line, but maybe it's just skipped it across. Stick the post. So the umpire has the ball 10 metres out from North Hobart's goal. Behind by two points in one point in today's. I need to check on that one. I believe it's two points. Still, mate. Clearance out from North Hobart, only as far as Bricknell. With numbers, North Hobart kicks the ball forward hurriedly, and that one is going to drift Done. over clean. the behind line. Is that? So the score on the scoreboard at the moment would be right. It's still one point in advance, Clarence. They climb it, they climb it in, go. Umpires, have a little discussion about this one? Let's listen to this conversation. Get him, get him to cross the score off. Yeah, hold it, hold it. Yeah, thanks boys. Throw it in. It's happened again. Deja vu again. That ball's gone across the face Who's of goal. Up? That's twice Clarence. in a row. Two. Thanks mate. Good fetch. So it's back to two points. That was an interesting couple of minutes of play just then. So both those look like they've gone through. Both those across the face and have drifted out of bounds. Bounds. Jasper Hayes in the number 13. So... Not sure what's going on here, but uh, we'll keep you updated. Nice punch out. Deshara's going to get a quick kick away. Inside forward 50 only as far as Blake Garrett, another skilled cricketer. He's going to send one long down that way. Uh, wing finds a teammate in Marriott. He's going to size his options up and go again down the line. Where's that man, Milwood? He sits at the back of the pack. Met heavily there was Volta. Now it's going to trickle out of... To that man, good one I think it was. Hand pass away to a teammate in Kelly. Hurried kick out again. So they're just peppering here, Clarence. Kick's going to go to the advantage of a teammate. Speed was leading that run chase. Whitelaw's taking in a strong tackle from Johnson. And we'll see that one as a ball up, I think. Tackle looked like it would have hurt just then, Bo. That was a nice tackle just then. So player number 30 in Johnson by North Hobart attacking the ball hard. Picked up, bounds around the mark. Had an opportunity to get rid of it just then. Was Cunningham, he didn't. And the umpires pick one out here and it's going to go the way of Clarence. Having an opportunity to extend this lead this time. Currently up by two. And he'll, Boys, he'll go back from about 35 metres out. I think you'll need to kick this out. It'll take a really nice kick. That's Darcy Goodwin. So Goodwin lining up. Going to have to kick this one 35, 40 metres. 45 degree angle. It's a nice approach. Goes around the left foot. He's tugged that one across, but there is a nice mark taken again. What are they going to do about Jai Millwood? He just looks strong when the ball goes up aerially. Get, get ready to set up, boys. Very, boys. very hard to beat. It was a, a miss kick, but he read it really well in Millwood. He found his way to the front of the pack and another mark. Going back for his... Opportunity to kick his third for the night. His Jai Millwood. 15 out. 45 degree angle. Makes no mistake. And Clarence surge further, further ahead. 
That puts them up by eight yeah, you're points. A long run now, Maddie. And probably a fair <laughs> reflection of the play that we've had this quarter by. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if he plays Devils or not, Millwood, but sign him up. Be trying to get him in there if he, if yeah. not, because his hands down forward have been I scary. Like he, Jerry's just giving us the nod. He definitely does. So valuable as asset to uh to Clarence and the Tassie Devils, of course. He's a uh, Really strong hands we see on the mood for a replay. Him going back and slotting it straight away. Now, it back, boys. So, 4 3 27 to 3 1 19. Thanks to the Brighton's best bake out scoreboard. Hey, gets the tap down. Volta, he's going to tap it onto himself. Shrugs around. Stiff arms. Gets the kick away. On the eve of the 50. Bounce isn't going to end kindly. Hey, off the hands of him. In and under there was Winch, and we'll see a ball up. So, up. about seven One. minutes to go. Five inside 50s to three this quarter. So, Clarence making the most of their Hold. opportunities. Nice tap down there was from Hay. No Hurried kick. Didn't eventuate from Carmichael. We'll see another ball up. Ripley wraps him up just then. So, the ball was not going anywhere. So, Hay back in the ruck. Resumes his battle with Tashara. Running through strongly. There was full sang. Gets his hand on the ball. And the ball moves forward. Looks like it's going to be tied up, so it's turned into a bit of a scrap out there. Other boys showed up. Both teams scrapping where you can see Brickner at the bottom of that pack just there. Same two again. So again on the forward, 50 for North Hobart. Ball goes up. Hay wins that one decisively. Hey, Takes on. him on. Gets, does not dispose of the ball correctly. Nice bit of play by Brickner, and I reckon we're going to have another ball up ball just here. Ball moves forward. Nice pick up just then by the man who tackled hard before. That was Johnson. Oh. Ball moves forward. Good attack on the ball. North Hobart in front, lovely tackle just then. Cunningham, the captain, across the face of goal. A one-on-one -on -one contest out here. Nice pick up just then, and there's Bounds. Gets the hands out, and Clarence have hey, some mate, open mate. air out in the far wing. Garrett sends it to a teammate, Watkins. It's a nice build-up so far for the Roos. They're going to keep this moving. Millwood provides a block. Off the hands there, Kelly's going to end up being wrapped in a tackle. We'll see a ball up. In Clarence's forward 50, so one up. One. North another, Hobart. another ball up with about five one. minutes to go. Hey, on. hey, nice tap down. Volta shrugs the man off, takes one bounce, looks inside the middle of North Hobart Oval. That's where he goes through the hands. It's going to eventuate to Evans, taps it on, tripping over there was Full Saint. He's going to mop it up again here, Full Saint. Both players just didn't know whether to go for it. In and under, there was Phil Pot. Cunningham, he's in there as well. Willsmore, Tashara, shrugs the tackle off. Sits it out in front of that man in Scott. Hay gets a hurried kick into the middle of North Hobart Oval. So, looks like it could be coming back. A nice little one-on-one -on -one was good there from Goodwin. Volta taking in a strong tackle. See it as holding the ball, Jace. Nice little don't argue by Volta. They argued and they tackled and they won the free kick. Ball moves forward. And is that that man's speed again? Yep. It is. And a beautiful mark just then. What, do you, what are the chances he plays on just here? One to the left, one to the right in this quarter. Both playing on. Does he take them on or does he go back and have a regulation set shot here, by? I reckon he might have to run around for this set shot. 40 something out, he takes a couple of extra steps. Hey, mate. Doesn't quite make the, make the distance. Back to the north, back to the north. So Moles. In, interesting free kick, just a little bit of holding but going on from both players, I believe. That'll give him a bit of confidence as well, Jace. Just his first win of the night. And a strong mark taken by Clarence. Hey, mate, mate. They can't move it past that halfway point at the moment, moving forward. That is a beautiful is. mark just yeah. then. That is Samuel Moles. So he's had a good couple of minutes here, Moles. Goes out wide. Clarence play with small hands in the back just there, but does enough to shift the player off the ball. Moves it forward just then was Marshall, and there he is again. Lining up for his fourth, I believe. Jai Millwood going for his fourth of the first half. Bit more of a regulation mark, just that this one just here takes it on his chest, makes no mistake. He's going to kick this one from about 36 metres out, I believe. Jai Millwood goes back, nice calm approach on the ball. 
Probably the easiest shot he's had of the day. And it's the only one that he's missed. Just off to the left-hand side just then. So Milde registers a point. And Clarence extend that margin by a little. Just over two and a half minutes remaining in this first half in what has been a really exciting and entertaining first half just then. That one slides out of bounds on the full. Archie Devine, who's been excellent tonight, I'd like to take that kick in. He's Clarence there, have the ball, 45 there. out. Player 43, and Jonty Winch, who was in big and important in the him. first five or ten minutes of this game, got his hands on a lot. Been a little bit quieter since then, but he's got a chance to put this one through from a very difficult angle. He moves around, opens it up a little bit. But peppering the goals and Clarence, and they extend that margin out to ten points with two minutes ago, no, to go in right this here. quarter. Okay. Devine will go again. No. Play so on. Archie Devine's going to bring it in. He's going to look to that outer wing or a few options. will form a pack and what a mark taken there from Philpot. They're going to go inside forward 50 again here. Clarence, Spreed's going to be the option. Thumping that one out there was Pamplin. We'll see another throw in, so a minute and a half. Who's Here we'll look at that mark One. from North Philpot, North. and what a nice mark that North was. Hobart. It's going to be a throw in no inside North forward Hobart. 50 here. North you can North hear it. No North Hobart no Ruckman. Right. No North Hobart. No North Hobart. So it's going to be McCallum. Play he on. takes it out of the ruck. He's met heavily there. Again in and under what is Winch. Gets the hand pass away. Speed's lurking. Left foot kick speeds. And Millwood, that man, he's going to line up for four. Mark back here, top of the screen. This guy is setting this game apart here, Jai Millwood. He's lining up for his fourth. That's a line, Jai. Nifty little kick Smart. there from Speed. Intended for the top of the square, exactly where it went. He knew that the big fella in Millwood was there. And Moles will not do his luck any good. Millwood's going to meander in. His fourth. Clarence's fifth. Brilliant effort just then by Jai Millwood. Just put the ball in the air anywhere near him today, Bo, and he's almost impossible to stop. You can see the way that North Hobart had set up there. They had a man back on Please the goal that. line to save that one. That one drops a little bit shorter, and Millwood was just too strong and too big and takes Thank a nice you. mark. He's kicked four, one or four, good two tonight. He's been excellent. Goes yeah. back, no, makes no mistake about that one. Ten seconds to go. No extra time, so I don't know if we'll get a ball up. If we do, it won't go much past that. Two or three seconds to go. Bursting through the middle there is Clarence, but to no avail. And that ends what has been an outstanding first half of football. They've had the ascendancy, Clarence Football Club, but the scoreboard has reflected that probably in the last five or ten minutes. They've started to convert their goals. Jai Millwood has been outstanding. He hasn't done it by himself, though. Jasper Hay in the ruck has been brilliant. I like the work of Zach Bounds. I think he has just kept going like a little terrier. Some excellent performances across the board, though, by Clarence. You look through that name and that list of names, and most of those names have been called out quite a few times. So a good team effort to Clarence to put by Clarence. It puts them up by 16 points. North Hobart. Thoughts there, Bo? Yeah, it was a, a convincing second quarter there from the Roos. We run through goal kickers quickly. Brody Speed with one. And Jai Millwood with a bag of four so far. Miller Barwick with two. And Lockie Fulsang with one. And it's currently 5-5-35 to 3-1-19. We'll bring you back for the Premiership quarter up next. Cross Hay again. Goes backwards before they move forward. One-on-one -on -one contest there. It's Clarence picking it up. Top of the square. And Clarence in a fantastic position. Brody Speed plays on, goes around the body. And Speed makes no mistake and kicks the first one of today's clash. Jeez, he that much support on, so he's going to have to do it himself. Tashara, his mark was hindered with, but umpire sees it as a mark. Cunningham's going to drill it inside forward 50. Leading out there is Barwick. He's going to line up for goal number one for himself and his team. Currently 117-000. You can look on the Mood Food replay here. It's a nice kick. A nice vision there from Cunningham. And Barwick takes a nice mark. So he's going to line up 
for his first. It's going to meander in here. Sets himself up. Kick's going to go on its way. Barwick's going to get the first for North Hobart. And it's a one. Looks across and sees Bricknell, who goes out wide. Volta turns around onto the left. Players up and in front. That was a fantastic mark by Barwick. He's causing some trouble up there. Played in front. Hands safely around the ball. You see just here. So Bricknell, hands out. To check numbers there, it may have been Volta, same sort of body shape. And Barwick plays in front, just worked his way in front of Hay. Just said, didn't have the height on him, but had the body position and moved in front. He goes back looking for his second. And that is straight through the middle. And North Hobart take the lead. It's a around the mark, he's always at the bottom of the pack. Looks 25 metres out, strong lead. You send in a strong mark. Jai Millwood. I mentioned him before, really strong hands, and I I liked his kicking style last week. It was a little bit Kerno-esque. Just laid back on it. Let's have a look at this one. He finds that position. Was never going to drop that one. Looks strong. Good basketball hands. I don't know if he's a basketballer. We'll, make, we'll say that he is, though. Let's have a look at this approach. Moves in. He's probably 35 out. It's quite close to the man on the mark. Lays back and makes... No mistake of it, Clarence kicked the first of the next quarter. That is exactly what you would have told them to do, Bo, in that, four, that huddle before. 50 to that man's speed. So speed's going to line up for his second. It's going to take an almighty thump, but I reckon he might have it. We'll see on the Mood Food replay here. Just the leading pattern that he used on that occasion. He had a good five metres on his opponent. So Speed's going to dance around, sell some candy, lines up the goals, Brody Speed for his second. Hey, just miss. Hey, lining up, going to have to kick this one 35, 40 metres, 45 degree angle. It's a nice approach, goes around the left foot, he's tugged that one across, but there is a nice mark taken again. What are they going to do about Jai Millwood? He just looks strong when the ball goes up, aerially. Get ready to set up, boys. Very, very hard to beat. It was a, a miss kick, but he read it really well in Millwood. He found his way to the front of the pack and another mark. Going back for his opportunity to kick his third for the night, his Jai Millwood. 15 out, 45 degree angle. Makes no mistake, and Clarence surge further, further ahead. That puts them up. Strong tackle. Oh, see it as holding the ball, Jace. Nice little don't argue by Volta. But they argued and they tackled and they won the free kick. Ball moves forward. And is that that man's speed again? Yep. It is. And we are a few options. We'll form a pack and what a mark taken there from Philpot. They're going to go inside forward 50 again here. Clear up. He's met heavily there. Again in and under is Winch. Gets the head pass away. Speed's lurking. Left foot kick speeds. And Millwood, that man, he's going to line up for four. This guy. He's this program brought to you by IGA. Where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After-hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day.
And as we see the players make their way back out for the start of the second half here, here in the STJFL under 16 and a half boys grand final. North Hobart have been out in the ground for a couple of minutes here. Clarence just making their way out onto the ground now and straight into position as we look forward to what should be a really interesting second half of football here at the home of football, North Hobart Oval. So last, I remember talking to you last, after halftime last game about getting off the phone to Channel 7 about your commentary duties. <laughs> Today it's been St Kilda Football Club trying to sign up the young full forward in Jai Millwood. We want him. He's playing well so far. The ball goes up for the start of the second half. And the umpire's picked one out here and it'll go the way of North Hobart. So nice early clearances just here in the middle here. Bricknewall Volta will grab the ball here. He's calling for the ball and waiting for it to come back into the middle here. Looks like Bricknell will have the ball in hand. So a nice way for North Hobart to start. They need to strike early in this next few minutes to try and get the ball back and the game back into their terms. Ball goes 50 into the forward 50, but a really strong mark just there. Beautifully taken by Blake Philpott. He looks out wide, finds a couple of players free. And that man in Goodwin stays in the far wing, looks up. Nicely played in front just there, player 52. Bradley Vincent. Hands off, North Hobart back with control again. Devine looks across to Cunningham. Ball goes up in the air. Barely travelling the 15. Knocked out by Clarence as they try and push the ball forward here. And the umpires pick one out here. And I think this is going to go to Volta in the middle. So Volta will get another chance to move North Hobart forward. It's been a strong start for the first minute back. They've come back firing. They're ready to go. The goal here will make a big difference. Looks inside and finds his mate in Devine. The umpire's called in to play on. And he's called it for holding the ball. He took a step. And that's all the umpire needed to fire him for that one. He looks across. Clarence. Millwood. There he is again. Goes out wide. So he's moved further up the ground just here. Clarence moving the ball inside the forward 50 with Watkins. Picks it up nicely. Goes to the top of the square. Nice contest there on the boundary on the goal line. And the ball drifts out of over the line for one behind. And Bo, welcome back. So Devine's going to bring it back in as he so often has this game. He's going to chip it out wide to that man, Volta, who's had a really strong game. Of course, they're losing at the moment, so they'll need him to stand up. Nice mark taken there from Carmichael. I think they're going to pay it. So Carmichael. Down the line. Off the hands there of Howes. And we'll see another boundary throw in. So just under three or two and a half minutes gone this quarter. Five, six, 36 plays. Three, one, 19. Hay wins the tap down convincingly. Good hand pass out there. And Winch will drive it inside forward 50. Finds a teammate in Riley Whitelaw. Spins around. Sits it out in front of Speed. So Speed's going to line up for his second. Similar angle to when he kicked his first goal in the first quarter in that pocket. He's not going to attempt to run around, though. He's going to go for a drop punt. So Brody Speed. Going number two. Will not happen just yet as Moles is happy to push see back. that one, one over, Jace. Push back in the 50 for me. One, two, three. Devine moves the ball on quickly. Umpire calls him back, though, not quite hold up, hold up. set and ready to go. So Devine has the ball in his hands again. So I shoot around. He's going to move this one across and finds a player free. So well worked out just then by North Hobart. Devine's looking for the next possession as well. He keeps moving forward. Goes further afield, though. Hay flies. Volta at the bottom of the pack with a nice tackle on Hay. Hey, strong enough to move the ball forward and a very, very nice mark just there. Playing in front, and that is exactly where you want to be in Jay Kelly. So Kelly will go back. Fair distance out here, 40 metres out from goal. Nice bit of play just then by Hay, you can see on the replay. The umpires pick something out here, and what's he done? It's a green card, we've missed that one. A little clap and a point from Millwood on his way. So I'm not sure what that was for. May or may not see a replay of that one. He didn't, but enough for the umpires to pick out to send him on a bit of a walk off the field and a green card. Yeah, Harrison Flack. Will, uh, come off. 
And a nice goal just then from Brody Speed. He's peppered the goals. I think he's hit, had three behinds in a row now, so it's nice for Speed to be able to go back and put that one through. Makes no mistake from it from 10 metres out and puts it through. So under, unsure what the indiscretion was just then. Either way, though, player has been sent off and Clarence moved further ahead. So they're surging forward now. North Hobart will need to lift. They'll need to find an answer. Speed's been dangerous. Yeah, great, yeah. Green card umpire explaining himself in the centre of the field. So back to the middle, block bow. Yep. Umpire Atkin is going to throw this one up here. So Tempers just flaring out a little bit. Hay, convincing tap down. In and under there is Bricknell. Gets the hand pass away. Do not handle for Cunningham. Hay gets the hand pass away. Tracking that one down is McMullen. Meeting him heavily there was Watkins. See a nice chipping kick to Barwick. Barwick and McMullen combined. Shrugs the tackle off. Handing it off there to Cunningham. Sits it out in front of a teammate. Willsmore gets taken in a strong tackle. And Clarence are pressing here. It's going to be a tackle to that man, Zach Bounds, who's going to size up his options. He's got a few in the middle. Decides to go down the line. Hay couldn't mark on that occasion. Gets the hand pass out. It's going to be Goodwin tracking it down. Divine. Kick is only as far as Toby Mitchell there. And they'll play on. Kick wasn't that great. It's going to be a foot race now. Will work out fine so far. Bradley Vincent shrugs two. Goes in and under again. Nice pick up there was from Howes. He's met. Can't, getting, can't get possession there is Marriott. And again we'll see a quick hand pass out there from Bounds. Drilling kick inside forward 50. Two on two here. Speed's going to get to the back of it. The speed is going to dribble one forward. That's his third goal there, Brody Speed. Just extends the margin out to 30 points. It's on the mood for a replay here. Two straight back, boys. Nice pick up. It was a good smother, though. Bounds just saw the vision for the hand pass and Speed. It was too fast. His opponent, Harry Flack, is obviously off the ground right now, receiving that green card. So they've had to shuffle the magnets around. Darcy Pamplin's going to have the job. Now you'd assume, Jace? You'd assume so. So they solve one problem and put a bit of work into Millwood and Speed has been outstanding to start this quarter. Hay with a nice tap through the middle. So North Hobart need to try and pull back the bit of a, a bit of the ascendancy just here in Volta. He's going to do it all by himself. He goes from 35 out directly in front and puts that one through for North Hobart. That was much needed. Volta. Anthony Volta took them on. Goes around one, goes around two. There he is in the middle just there. So does the work early. Taps it to himself. Little short kick. Pretty much the only person that touched the ball in play just then was Anthony Volterbo. That was an outstanding piece of play. Yeah, it certainly was. What a pick up there and what a spot fire, or I should say fire starter to try and bring this team back up. It was a bad choice of words there for myself, but... No we'll spot fires. In. It was a good fire no. starter though. Hey, what can he do to reverse this though? Ball goes out. They've lifted a little bit. North Hobart. Only goes 10 or 15. No mark called. He goes laterally across the ground. One on one out there. Tap forward just in nicely. Ball in possession. Good hands. Looks up and finds Carmichael. Who kicks the ball in. North Hobart pushing. There's Willsmore. Strong tackle just then. No chance to dispose of that effectively. Umpire calls for the ball just here. So North Hobart, another goal here would really make a difference. Full sang off hands, goes to the Clarence player. Looks in boards, running through the middle. Ball in dispute at the moment, keeps it out in front of him. A nice pick up just then and turns it around nicely in McMullen. Goes to the centre of the ground, Cunningham. Kicks the ball forward and there he is to Shara. To Shara with a nice mark. This is an important kicker goal. Needless to say, a goal here would make a big difference. So Demons 4-1-25. Right. A goal here will make it a three-goal margin. So an important kick from to Shara just when it looked like the game was going to fall out of their control. Inspired by Volta through the middle. This time to Shara going back. 30 metres out, directly in front. 
Nice approach. Yeah, Kicks it high and just offline. Could be an important point of goal. Would have been nice though. So the Demons by 23. A nice kick just there and finds bounds. That trusty right foot. A dinky kick gets his hand in there nicely. Just then was McMullen. Clarence surging the ball forward. Running onto that at the moment is Watkins. Hey. Divine. The umpire will have this one. A little bit of feeling in there. You brought it on yourself, says the umpire. I like it. Ball goes up to Vine. The bottom of the pack, but Hay clears him. Moves the ball forward. Nicely picked up just then. I believe McMullen gets the hands off. An incorrect disposal. He looked to get the hands out just there, but I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I thought so as well. Yeah, he, he did. That's uh, unfortunate for North Hobart. And more unfortunate is a little bit of undisciplined play just then that leads to a 50 metre penalty given. And an easy goal just here from Watkins, who's just going to march in. They don't even bother putting anyone on the mark. And he moves forward, which is disappointing for North Hobart. They've had the ascendancy in this last five or ten minutes. Yeah, look, I'm not quite sure about the call for the throw, but I guess we'll, uh, umpires know more than, than we do up here. Certainly on the mood for a replay, it looked like it was a nice hand pass. But what can you do about it? You just have to move on. So... 29 point lead now to the Roos. They couldn't afford to give a goal up there, North Hobart, and Temper's just flaring. Yeah, good So, mate. umpire sorted that out well, though. We're back to the centre. Nice looking throw in. Uh, throw up. Hay. Might be Divine in there. Crumming that one. It was. So, he's moved into the middle now, Archie Divine. Hay and Barwick. Hay. Tap down off the foot of Whitelaw. Barwick's going to be taken into the tackle. Umpire Scott's going to do another throw up. So Hay gets his own ball. Thumping kick inside forward 50. Where's that man, Millwood? Moles has the job on him. Failing to pick that one up is Croswell. He's met heavily. In and under there is Goodwin. I should say Watkins had just kicked that goal. Was taken in the tackle, and we'll see a ball up inside forward 50. Done a good job of maintaining Millwood's early influence in this start of this third quarter. Hasn't had a lot of it yet, but moves onto the left foot just in. A nice kick. Ball's going forward, and speed just off hands. Maybe just got it before the boundary, before the goal line. Dribbles over. That's one behind for Clarence as they extend that lead further. 30. Points the margin. As we go past the halfway point of the third quarter. Devine goes out wide. Strong contest just then from Volta. Picked up well. That was McMullen. He's been excellent. Zach Carmichael has been really great. Mate, you can't fall. Barwick's in the middle. He said, mate, you can't fall. It's interesting. This is these umpires. Got good control of this game out here. There's speed again, though. The ball goes to the back of the pack. Oh. Well, he could have had a very big day, speed. It's not over yet. He has been absolutely peppering those goals. That one just offline. Probably had a little bit more time than he realised just then, Speed. Wait up, wait up. Devine has a look around. Hold, hold. Good. Good. And Clarence players, plenty of time to get back into position. You, mate, you. A bit of a zone as Devine goes long and finds Full Sang off the chest of Full Sang, though. Ball moves forward by Clarence. Devine attacking the ball hard. Player 43 with a nice pick up, and that was Winch. And a nice one handed mark akin by this man, Speed. Jewel act up forward. Speed has been outstanding in this quarter. Clear out, boys, North Hobart. Clear. Straight out. Nice vision there. Sorry for Jonty Winch. Absolutely. Beautiful pick up. Nice vision. And Speed makes no mistake of that one. 37 points now, the margin. Sky boy says, show back up for me. And you can see just then they're not happy, not happy just to rest on their laurels. They're planning their next attack. That's four now for speed. Good. Yeah, good goes back and makes no mistake of that one. Good 
Don't get many opportunities in these grand finals. So even though Hope may feel lost for North Hobart, they need to stay with it. Funny things happen in grand finals. We've spoken about that before. Tashara back in the middle. Up against Hay. Hay, who won the last one decisively, wins this one again, but only as far as Volta. Goes around, slung around in the tackle. Nice pick up just then by Cunningham. He holds on to the ball. The captain's done a great job today. So Volta has matched up well with Cunningham. Bricknell's been in there. And Archie Devine, you can see at the back of the pack just there, reading off hands. So Devine picks that one up, saw where Hay was going to hit it. And this is going to be a ball up just here. Five minutes remaining in this third quarter, Bo. Certainly is. It's going to be another throw up. Tashara winning that one down. Devine, Tashara is going to soccer it. There's a whistle, though. It's going to be a free kick to that man, Archie Devine. So can they conjure something up here? North Hobart give him a little bit of hope heading in to three-quarter time. It's a nice kick to Barwick. He's going to hand it off to McMullen. Sells to Candy. It was Cunningham who started it all off, I should say. Inside forward, 50 kick. Nice mark taken there. I think it was from Phil Pot. It wasn't. It was actually Jasper Hay. From Hay. So, going to go to this broadcast side wing. Meeting it heavily there was Watkins. Taken in the tackle was Howes. Or Quinn, I should say. So, it's a hot footy so far. Hay. Quick kick out. He's going to just go on the eve of the forward 50. Eventually... It will probably trickle in, tapping it to himself. There is Vincent, Millwood, hurry kick there with some Garrett inside forward, 50 fine speed. Instrumental in this attack for Clarence, he's going to play on speed. Sizes up the goals and he's had a shocker in front of goals tonight, Jace. He's kicked four, but... Can you say that something about four, 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 I reckon. Yeah, I don't know if you can say he's had a shocker when he's kicked four, but gee, he's playing very well. Looks dangerous every time he gets it. Looks to play on it every occasion, but I don't know if it's the right tactic out there, but he's moving the ball forward, and they've got a nice little lead to rest on. So a good bit of play just then by Speed. Ball goes out the back, lovely tackle just then by Hay. He is quick. And takes down the North Hobart player in Quinn. Looks to that hot spot in the middle. Millwood goes up one-handed this time. Wasn't his best approach to the football. Volta with the ball. Takes a bounce. Looks up, does he see options? He does, he looks out wide, it's McMullen there, off hands. Goes up single-handedly, wheels around onto the left, that's a beautiful left-footer kick. Goes forward and taking a nice mark there is Fulsang. They've linked up well, this has been a nice bit of play, Fulsang looks up. Top of the square three, Clarence plays moving into that dangerous position. Again, three on one. Clarence look up and they find McMullen though. Off hands, a nice little tap just there, dangerous. Kicks the ball forward, North Hobart have got numbers back. Hey mate, mate. Nice bit of play there by Willsmore. Keeps the ball out in front of him, hands hey, out hey. just then. Over to Volta again, Volta Yo, looks mate, wide. Yo. Finds McMullen, who read the play well over Bounds. Bounds pulled up a little bit sore on that one. He's had a few knee injuries previously. That's off hands by Hay, attacking it hard is full sang. Ball in dispute, it comes out. Kick off the ground by Clarence. McMullen again. Ball ripped off him. Nice bit of it. work just then by Cunningham at the bottom of the plaque. Umpires pick one out just then. I think it'll be a North Hobart free kick. A nice re reward for continued effort just then. This is Tashara. He's probably on a 45 degree angle. Looks for hands off. He sees Volta. He's kicked one from there already today and he puts this one through. Post height. Goal for Anthony Volta. And North Hobart stay with them. 31 point lead now to the home team in Clarence. 9963 to 5232. Thanks to the Brighton's best Baker scoreboard. We'll look on that mood food replay there, and Volta sends it for goal. It was a nice kick. He single handedly bringing this North Hobart attack. We got one to Back into contention. So Tashara. Jasper Hay are going to go at it again. Just a little point. Tashara could probably go to that inner square or circle, I should say, and try and hinder the, the jump of Hay. Quick kick inside, forward 50. Off the hands of Millwood. Nice pick up there was from Johnson. Still in the vicinity of the 50. Nice hand pass off. 
Kick around the corner's good. Two on two, uh, two on one, I should say. White Law's there. Winch spinning round. Hair pass got away eventually. And seeing that one over is Jay Kelly. Can we just make, in. make mention just quickly of Samuel Moles and the work that he's put in to Millwood in this quarter? I think that he's been instrumental in trying to stop this forward attack. What it has unearthed is young speed, though, who has been excellent. Nice tap just then. Millwood. Ball goes out only as far and kicked into the centre. And a nice mark just take, taken just then by Vincent. We'll go back and have a set shot from about 35 metres out. So, on the siren, Bradley Vincent. He's going to send it long. It's going to get the distance, but ultimately inaccurate. So, run through your goal kickers. First off, Brody Speed with four, John Millwood with four, and Brock Watkins with one for Clarence. We got Miller Barwick with two, Anthony Volta with two, and Lockie Fulsang with one. So, 9 on 63 to 5 to 32. It's a 31 point margin. How do you see that premiership quarter, Jace? I think Clarence did what they needed to. They got the early ascendancy. I think Volta tried to single handedly lift North Hobart, as you alluded to in the call before. I think speed looks so dangerous Anything, any time he goes near the ball, though. I think Jasper Hay was outstanding in the ruck that quarter. Bounds, bottom of the pack, doing really well. From North Hobart's point of view, a, a really good effort. I think McCallum, sorry, uh, player number 38 and Flack. I thought it was a, a good team effort by them. I think Cunningham was instrumental. Bricknell had a really good quarter. And as we mentioned, Samuel Moles was excellent. Nullified the efforts of Millwood in that quarter. So, we'll have a look at the highlights here and uh, as the two teams go to their huddles, we'll bring you last quarter action of the under 16.5 division up next. So North Hobart need to try and pull back the bit of a, a bit of the ascendancy just here in Volta. He's going to do it all by himself. He goes from 35 out directly in front and puts that one through for North Hobart. That was much needed. Volta, Anthony Volta took them on. Goes around one, goes around two. There he is in the middle just there. So does the work early. Taps it to himself. Little short kick. Pretty much the only person that touched the ball in play just then was Anthony Volterbo. That was an outstanding piece of play. Yeah, it certainly was. What a pick up there and what a spot fire, or I should say fire starter to try and bring the yeah, That's uh, unfortunate for North Hobart. And more unfortunate is a little bit of undisciplined play just then that leads to a 50 metre penalty given and an easy goal just here from Watkins who's just going to march in. They don't even bother putting anyone on the mark. And he moves forward, which is disappointing for North Hobart. They've had the ascendancy in this last five or ten minutes. Yeah, look, I'm not quite sure about the call for the throw, but I guess we'll uh, umpires know more than, than we do up here. Certainly on the mood for a replay, it looked like it was a nice hand pass, but what can you do about it? You just have to move on. So. 29. Goes long and finds Full Sang off the chest of Full Sang though. Ball moves forward by Clarence. Divine attacking the ball hard. Player 43 with a nice pick up, and that was Winch. And a nice one handed mark akin by this man, Speed. Back here. Dual line, back here. Dual up forward. Speed has been outstanding in this quarter. Clear out, boys. North over. Please. Try it out. Nice vision there. Sorry for Dotty Winch. Absolutely. Beautiful pick up, nice vision. And Speed Nate makes no mistake of that one. 30 So it's the candy. It was Cunningham who started it all off, I should say. Inside forward, 50 kick. Nice mark taken there. I think it was from Phil Pot. It wasn't, it was actually Jasper Hay. From Hay. So gonna go. Continued effort just then. This is Tashara. He's probably on a 45 degree angle, looks for hands off. He sees Volta. He's kicked one from there already today and he puts this one through. Post height, goal for Anthony Volta.
Welcome back to fourth and final quarter action here, live from North Hobart Oval. It's currently Clarence in front by 31 points. So the last game for either of these teams for the year, it's been a really good year for both teams. But Clarence look like they're gonna get the chockies today unless something miraculous can happen on the Demons end, so Umpire Keaton Atkins going to get us underway here in around about a few seconds, I reckon. We're just waiting for this 666 rule to be enforced again. I'm not sure if that's a tactic to waste some time or whatever they're trying to do, but they kept him in for a pretty long time, their coach, Adrian Goodwin, didn't he, Jase? He's done that a few times. North Hobart, after every break, have been out on the ground earlier, ready to start the quarter. Clarence will be quite content with how things are going at the moment. It's never over, though, and a nice tap just in. It might be with Brady. The nice tap just in. And Jasper Hay hitting it down. The throat, the umpires picked one out here. I'm not sure what it was for just then. We we'll might have a bit of a look at that replay. And the young Clarence player in Millwood will go back and have a shot for his fifth goal. Not quite sure how it ended up in his hands just then. Bo, we should get a chance to see that on the replay. Needless to say though, Jai Millwood will maybe put this game beyond doubt to start the fourth quarter. He goes back. And not quite by Millwood. He just keeps them in the, in, in the game, sorry. Demons with a glimmer of hope still. But that little bit of hope is fading with every score that Clarence can put on the board. He goes wide and looks to Cunningham. Captain Cunningham in the back pocket for North Hobart. Looks up and sees McCullum. He was the name I was looking for at the end of last quarter. Hay goes up strongly. Good hands by Bricknell. He goes wide. He sees Devine. He moves the ball forward with McCullum. He's caught on that boundary. Clarence tackling hard. Tell you what, I like the way that Rex Johnson tackles. One on three just here. He does a good job. Good job just then by Will Croswell. Ball comes out. Cunningham again. Just off the ball. Looks to the sanctity of the boundary line. And the ball will drift on over now. So just in front of Devine and Rex Johnson, the tackling machine. Ball drifts out of bounds. A couple of minutes into the third, last quarter of the STJFL 16 and a half grand final for 2023. Hay off the hands of him. In and under there was full saying. Couldn't quite pick it up. Cunningham gets the hand pass away. Speed shrugs a few off. He's going to talk but long. Speed, how's this one going to trickle through? Millwood tied along the boundary. Gets it to Whitelaw. Snap from Whitelaw. It's going to just sneak and hit the post. So... Now a 33-point lead to the Roos. Devine's going to kick this one in. He's going to look to go to that outer wing. Archie Devine plays on. Thumping right foot kick. Mopping up there. Might be Pamplin. It was Philpot Inside forward. 50 kick. Millwood. Brung down Rain with him. Overstepping that one is Lang. In and under there was Vincent, he got the hand pass away. He's still lurking though, speed tight along the boundary. Ball in hand is married, he snaps it around the corner and Devine on the last line of defence is gonna mop this one up. Out to McMullen. McMullen kicks it to half back where he finds Jed Bricknell. Bricknell looks in board, Devine calling for the ops not to go there. 
Cunningham, arms out wide. He takes him on though, Bricknell. Now he goes in board and he finds Full Sang. He goes around off hands, bottom of the pack just there, and this ball will be balled up in a minute. So North Hobart desperately need one back just here. Clarence doing their best to stop that bar. It goes up against Hay. Hay with a nice tap down to Speed, who's moved onto the ball. Volta takes two or three of them, bring him down every time he gets the ball. Umpire calls for it back again. Hay, where's he going to this time? This time he grabs it out of the ruck. Hands only as far as North Hobart, though. He'll have another shot at it here. So the first one tapped to advantage. Second one he's grabbed out of the ruck. Interested to see what Hay aims to do this time. See how he thinks through this one. And that time he taps it strongly forward. Volta tackled strongly. Could have been holding the ball with speed. He took him on. Gave him a don't argue. Speed though, strong. It's been good since he's been moved onto the ball. A nice tap just in again by Hay. McMullen. Nicely picked up by Cunningham. He's been everywhere this quarter. Picked up by the Clarence player in McCallum. Ball goes forward. Volter again knocked out of his hands just then. Volter again takes them on as he does. And this time he must be holding the ball. He's not. Umpire says play it on. And we'll have a ball up on the forward 50 with 15 minutes remaining in this grand final. Hay taps it down again, Devine at the bottom of the pack this time, looks out, doesn't have clean possession of the ball this time and he's ridden into the ground by Watkins. Devine looks up, what does he have on offer? So Devine's just going to send it in the middle of the ground looking for Hope to Shara. We can't pass out, spiked out of the air from, McMa from McCallum. Falter running onto that one. And pass away, Curtin's going to drill one inside forward, 50 and find the target. That man Kelly's going to line up for his first. So, Kelly's going to line up for his first. Clarence's 10th. This two, well and truly put it to bed. Nice hands from speed there and Curtin found the lead of Kelly. So, he's going to take a pretty good kick. Slight angle. Jay Kelly to bring the house down. Thumping right foot kick. It's going to go on its way. Millwood's going to mark. Just out of bounds. Back to the nine, join, join. Back to the nine. Nine. Pace, mate, Looking to down. move quickly here for the D's. On. Not much on. Eight, eight. Chipping kick over to McMullen. And full back for the North Hobart Demons is on, McMullen. Caresses it to that outer wing. Bodies former pack. Running onto that one there is Carmichael. Dribbling one on the eve of the 50. Nice pick up there. It was from Mitchell. He eventually fumbled it. We'll see a boundary throw in, Jace. Just in front of Hooker from North Hobart just then. So the ball will go come back into play in North Hobart's forward line. Barwick up in the ruck this time against Hay. Umpire takes a couple of steps in. It's a nice throw. Hay with strength pushes the ball across to the side. Bricknell leading the way to the ball. Volta again. Love to see his possession count for today. Volta and Devine, those two gentlemen for North Hobart, have been absolutely fantastic. Beautifully picked up, I believe that was speed. Finds a player on the inside in Garrett. Garrett takes his time, assesses options, and finds a great option in Millwood. Jai Millwood this time. Will he go back and kick his fifth goal? Put you on the spot here, That's Jace. I like it. Millwood for the medal. Millwood, second quarter for the medal. First quarter strong, third quarter drifted out of it. Just to finish the game strongly, I think. I think Speed's probably pushing pretty hard for it now. Uh, Jasper Hay in the ruck. He's been absolutely outstanding. The goal here for Millwood makes it interesting, though. He's gone back and he's just pushed that one off to the side. It's gone out on the full. So he's had some opportunities, Millwood. Both Millwood and Speed could have put that medal debate out of the question if they'd kicked straight today. They've both kicked four yeah. and both have had ample opportunities. Ball goes out just here, player, player number 13, and Toby Lang, the vice-captain, looks up and sees Jasper Hay. 
I think Jasper Hay is probably my favourite for the middle at the moment. And finds a player at the back who just read that a little bit better. Player number 53 in Riley Whitelaw. So Riley Whitelaw looking to put his name back onto the goal-kicking list. Read that play, read that ball well through play here. He's 25 at metres out, 45 degree angle. Nine goals, 11 so far for Clarence. Make that 10 goals, 11, and Clarence move further ahead. Party time for the Roos now. Would you say this lead is big enough? Yeah, I reckon it's, it probably is. But uh, when you see Colby Whitelaw on... Moonfood replay. Nice set shot for goal. Makes it very difficult now for the D's. 10 11 71 to 5 2 32. Thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. We'll go back in the middle now with 10 and a half minutes to go here on the clock. Umpire Scott's going to get us underway. Neither Ruckman failing to get that tap. Mysterious number 42 is back out there. Failing to get the hand pass away. Was that Clarence Man? Quick kick out from Kelly. Hurried out there. And again, North Hobart, they're just being pressed at the moment. Hand pass a little too hot to handle. And again, Clarence is being able to win it on that wing. Sends it out. Hay can't take the mark, and we'll see a boundary throw in. Big fella number 42, we don't have just yet. Wins the tap down convincingly. Devine, he's met straight away from Palmer. Shrugging the tackle. He gets the quick kick out. Demons just overrunning it. Palmer's in and under again. Hand pass out. Speed, or I should say Vincent on that occasion, getting the hand pass away and getting wrapped up there. Nice tackle just then by Lachlan Fitzgerald. I like the way the players are thinking about how they're putting a player down to the ground. Just then Fitzgerald eased him down to the ground. Doing a good job in the ruck there. Player number 42 for Clarence. Goes forward and it's Hay. Hay with a nice kick in Millwood's direction. Hands up. The big jukes go up and Millwood takes the, gut, takes the mark. This is about his seventh attempt to kick his fifth goal just here. I've got a feeling this time it's going to go straight through the high diddle diddle. Jai Millwood, again, on a slight angle, directly in front. He's going to need to kick this one 42 metres. I don't think the distance is going to be an issue for him. Accuracy has proven to be so, though. So Millwood will go back, looking for his fifth. Again, that nice, steady approach. Passes the 50. Touched off. Oh, touched off the mark, but Rove beautifully by Clarence. And Speed, this time, kicks his fifth goal for the day. Just read that ball better than anyone else on the field. Fell through to him nicely, makes no mistake of that. And that is a good goal by Speed. He has been outstanding today. Maybe starts to move his name into calculations for that medal. He's been excellent. Ball back to the middle. I'd love to know big number 42's name in there for Clarence. He's doing a good job. Name not on the t-shirt team sheet that we have at the moment up here in the box, though. So, ball back to the middle. A few smiles in the Clarence box at the moment. Holding and a Clarence free kick, this one. And it's player 44 and Watkins. Goes back behind the mark, looks up. Who does he see? He sees Millwood. Ball up in the air. Millwood takes that one strongly. Okay, what, what are you doing here to mix things up here, Bo? I reckon probably so, got to shift Sam Moles around to a, a smaller player because this matchup right now isn't working. Obviously, the game's probably done, but just for a bit of a... Uh, I don't know, just, just to kind of sweeten the loss, you'd probably want to... Stop these goals flowing through. As Millwood's going to line up inside the square. He's going to send it on. Home, it's a thumping kick from Millwood. 
Miss to the right hand side. Devine's going to bring it back in for the D's. Points to the middle. Sends a thumping right foot kick out to that middle of North Hobart Oval. Pack forms. Cunningham too hot to handle. Curtin sends it inside forward 50. Who have they got down there? Speed's lurking around. Devine. Millwood has him for company. Speed might have taken him high, but we'll see. The ball up. Speed's been really dangerous. Hart, I should say, umpire Keaton Atkins is going to throw it up again. Convincing tap down there from Hay. McMullen gets the hand pass. Quickly out. Cunningham to an out number of Roos. Nice contest made there from Phil Pot. Torping up and under kick there was from Watkins on the eve of the 50. Nice use of the body. Tracking that one down there is Vincent. Shrugs off a few. Hay gets the hand pass. Millwood's on the boundary line. And again, Volta out. Clearing the area only for the time being. It's going to come back by way of Goodwin. Swings around to that left foot. Inside forward, 50 kick. Off the hands of Hay. He's going to crumb his own ball. Volta takes the bounce. Shrugs the tackle. Gets the kick away eventually. Out to that... Wing, he finds a teammate there in full saying. Spins around on the right foot. Too hot to handle again there for his teammate. They're going to go inside forward 50 eventually. Barwick might have been held. Nice body work was used from McCallum. Spinning around there is Hall. Smell it again. McCallum's a dangerous defender there and he gets it away substantially. So, Evans dropped the mark. In and under is full saying again. We'll have a ball up. Jace. We come with five minutes remaining. It's been a long season for these gentlemen to come down to this last five minutes. Clarence looked to have this one wrapped up well. I think it's beyond doubt now. Volta tries to get a clearance. Sorry, not Volta. Ball in dispute. Full sang hands out just then. There's Evans. Ball pushing forward for North Hobart. They're trying to surge forward. Evans again gets the ball around this around the shoulder, nicely picked up. Doesn't have the ball there as the umpire picks something out of here. He hasn't. There was maybe one there that was missed. Hands out though, Clarence. Have numbers and move the ball up the wing. Over the top of Hay this time. Hasn't missed much today, but beautifully picked up on the way through was Winch in space in front of Millwood. Look at the size difference between these two, but really well done just then by Darcy Pamplin. Had the big Millwood coming towards him, showed some composure and get, got that ball out of bounds in a safe position for a moment. Less than four minutes remaining now. They haven't stopped training, trying North Hobart though, Bo. They've been gallant in defeat today. They've continued to try and surge the ball forward. I think Clarence potentially with just a, a few, few too many big bodies. Nicely picked up, a nice tackle just then again. Kicked out of the fence along the ground. North Hobart surging forward again. There's McMullen. Looks to the centre of the ground. Full Sang attacks the ball. But hands out by Clarence. Again, Full Sang at the bottom of the pack. And I think the umpire will have this one to ball it up. So umpire Scott's going to throw it up. Nice looking throw. Tap down was one there from Clarence. Spinning out there was Bricknell into the middle of North Hobart Oval. Nice tap on there was from Philpot. Bull. Curtin. All combined to drive it inside forward 50. Leading out there is Speed. Millwood couldn't bring it down. Quick kick out there was from Lang. I'll surge it forward again. Through the hands of that man Mitchell. Valter hasn't stopped trying all day. Takes a bounce. Takes another bounce. Needed to take a third bounce. He's met there. And nice tackle laid there from Toby Mitchell. Two minutes left. This under 16.5 grand final. Let him know about it just then was Mitchell, but I love the way that Volta goes about his football. He's been tireless today. I'd love to see his possession count, his super coach points. He's taken them on at all opportunities. Just overrunning it just then was big number 42. Ball comes out, 19. Moves the ball forward and a nice mark taken just then by Winch. So that was Palmer before that, a play down on the ground just then. Potentially a little bit of cramp. 
Coming into the last two minutes unsure. It looks a little bit crampish out there, I reckon, by. Get the pickle juice out. Nothing worse. Nothing worse. Not going to make a diagnosis from up in the commentary box, but that's if I was going to make one, that's what I'd be saying. Bulls trapped inside the Clarence 50. One minute and 30 seconds roughly remaining in this. STJFL under 16 and a half boys grand final. Clarence 11, 12, 78. North Hobart have been gallant. 5 2 32, but the class of Clarence I think is just shining through. The clock has stopped as we wait for this player to move off the ground. So the celebrations momentarily on hold for Clarence. Best on ground, little Jace. I'm coming straight out that way. Oh, I think I'm going to go with Jasper Hay. I think I'm going to go with Jasper Hay. I think both um, Speed and Millwood both had their patches and they've both played really well. I think Hay's been outstanding through the day. But who am I to judge? And that's what I'm not doing, judging. If you're going to pick one from North Hobart, I think that um, Bolter has been outstanding. Devine's been outstanding. Lot of work. It's a nice mark just then. Uh, he's incorrectly disposed of him. The ball goes back inside 50 for Clarence. The clock has resumed. Oh, and it is an absolute flyer from Millwood. He came from the clouds. On the back of Volta. And a beautiful mark just then from Jai Millwood. He's had, without a lie, he would have had seven shots from this place just here. And he hasn't put one through yet. Can this be the opportunity to do so? He's kicked four for the day. To make it five, Millwood goes back. Touch ball, play on, play Touch on. again. So maybe the distance is the issue just there. Hands up by North Hobart. 40 seconds remaining. Oh. A dangerous position. And Jasper Hay grabs it out of nowhere. A smile on the face. It's as easy as they come for Jasper Hay. And a great goal just then. And as we come into the last 20 seconds, I don't know if we'll get another play for the 2023 season for these gentlemen. A nice goal from Jasper Hay. Off hands, you'll see here. Dangerous handball back into the goal square. Hay smart enough to read that and puts that one straight through the middle. So we're going to go back into the middle now. The dying stages of this under 16.5 season. It's going to be the Clarence Ruse leaping into Premiership glory. 52 point winners against North Hobart. 12 12 84 to 5 2 32. Thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. A convincing effort. Gallant in defeat North Hobart. The Clarence ultimately lifting up this cup. All thanks to a dominant second quarter, Jace. I think that's where the damage was done, wasn't it? Moving into that second quarter at the start of the third. That was a fantastic win from Clarence. They were the better team all day. North Hobart stuck with them. A couple of goals late in that first quarter to put them back in contention. But I think the forward entries in that first quarter probably should have had Clarence further in front. The more opportunities they got, the further in front they moved. Probably quite inaccurate at the end there for Clarence. 12-12 doesn't look that bad, but I think some of those behinds were probably fairly kickable for Clarence but you can't complain when you win a grand final by 52 points and that was an excellent team effort by Clarence leading goal kickers for the day though who were they? Brody Speed I think he might have got six five or six for the big fella Brody Speed number 32 he'll definitely be polling well in the votes Jasper Hay with one there Jai Millwood with four he probably should have had six or seven the big fella Brock Watkins won. Riley Wal Weisslaw with one. They ran out your Clarence goal kickers. And Miller Barwick with two. Anthony Volta with two. And Lockie Fulsang with one. So, convincing display here from the Roos. It's been a great season for them. Finishing on top, I believe. So, and you can see that man number 38, Oliver Talbot. Let's hope he can get a medal. He was obviously the injured player from last week. So... Congratulations to him and his team. We'll go down to the presentations and then we'll uh, we'll come back for our sign-off.
Good evening patrons, thanks very much for everyone's attendance at uh, tonight's rescheduled Barwick's STJFL under 16.5 boys grand final. Commiserations to North Hobart, you've uh, obviously had to do it the very hard way playing through the finals every week through the finals series. Congratulations to the Clarence uh, team on being the victors tonight. I'd now like to welcome Ben Payne from the TFUA to call out the umpires to receive their medallions on being appointed to a grand final. And well done to the umpires on a great effort tonight. Thanks, Tony. North Hobart, congratulations on an amazing season. Commiserations on tonight. Well played. Clarence, well done. And congratulations on your season. You win tonight. To our umpires, well done on your appointment and your efforts tonight, guys. In the field, we had Matt Scott, Kite Nakin, David Monks, and Jason Nichols as our emergency. Our boundaries, James Marsh, Duncan Hobday, and our goal umpires, Fletcher Ryan, Tate Hollingsworth. Thanks to the STJFL and everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. And once again, thanks to our umpires. I'd now like to call on the North Hobart coach, Jack McCulloch, to come forward to say a few words. Cheers. Um, to the boys from the Eastern Shore, thanks for a great contest. You've been, um, yeah, the benchmark all year. Um, always a great contest against you guys. And um, I don't know if Ollie Talbot's here tonight, but I'm um, wishing him all the best um, as well with his recovery. Um, to Goody, um, the, the work you put in throughout the week, mate, to, to get your boys up to play is a credit to you and your junior footy club. So um, well done for getting these boys up. And... Um, yeah, all the best in the future to my boys. Um, we've had a great year. We've probably overachieved um, somewhat in a way, making it this far with the numbers that we've had. But um, I love all you boys. I can't wait to play with um, many of you in the future. And um, yeah, umpires, thank you. And uh, to the SG STJFL as well, thanks for putting it on. So cheers, guys. Thanks, Jack. For the presentation of our best player on the ground this evening to be made by our president, Mr Jim Horn, goes to Clarence Ruckman, our All-Australian, Jasper Hay. Step ladder. Jasper. 
Oh, I'd just like to say thanks to North Hobart. They put up a great fight. It was a real tough game. And just thanks to our boys and all our coaching staff for the whole year. Thanks to the umpires for a good game. So. Thanks, Jasper. Well spoken. Just while Jasper's having his photograph taken, we'd like to call on the coach of Clarence, Adrian Goodwin, to come forward to say a few words. Then Adrian will call out his players to receive their premiership medallion. Uh, firstly, uh, to Jack and North Hobart, um, you know, after last weekend, um, I guess the way that everybody handled it, um, that situation was, uh, you know, was spot on. I not involved in anything like that in, in all my time, 26 years of coaching, but uh, um, the health of Ollie in front of everything else, like, like you guys are absolutely awesome, okay? And North Hobart Footy Club's in really good shape because, Jack, you're a fantastic um, young man, mate, and... Uh, and uh, if you're leading the North Hobart Senior Footy Club, mate, you're going places. Um, the, the way you led these guys here, um, purely outstanding. And uh, you're a great man, mate. And we appreciate everything and the support um, that you gave us through the week. I'd also, I'd also uh, I'd like to thank our footy club, I'd like to thank uh, Headspace, um, the processes our footy club put in place after last weekend. Um, that was really, really important. To be honest, we, we weren't totally sure that we would play, um, but uh, given the attitude of Ollie who went down last week and um, the attitude of his family and uh, the, the outstanding people that they are, it was really Ollie's messages to our group that really pulled us over the line and, and his encouragement um, yeah, really set us on our way. And the boys really dug deep. It's really hard when you're dealing with 15 and 16 year old minds um, to see which way they reacted and we were really nervous as a footy club. Um, but you know, credit to the Talbot family, um, credit to Ollie and uh, credit to our boys for pulling yourselves together today. Very well done. I'd like to thank the umpires, fantastic. Um, the STJFL, fantastic. And uh, we'll start by getting Ollie Talbot up. <laughs> Um, oh, I just want to say thanks to everyone, like the support of you blokes and the support of everyone around after last week has been amazing and uh, all the messages have been unreal, so um, yeah, you've, well done to you blokes, like you put up a fight for these boys and um, well done boys, so yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, Owen Rand. <laughs> Dylan Baker. Henry McCallum. Toby Mitchell. <laughs> We're going too quick. Yeah. Noah Stewart. Brad Vincent. Jay Kelly. Dante Mikulowski. Ned Marriott. Zach Bounds. Xavier Bull. Riley Whitelaw. Jasper Hay. 
Brody Speed. Jai Millwood. <laughs> Darcy Goodwin. Zach Curtin. Luke Curtin. Who we got? <laughs> Zachy. <laughs> Curto, that'll do. <laughs> oh, I just didn't go. Jonty Winch. Lincoln Crossan. Blake Garrett. Uh, Luke Palmer. Brock Watkins. Lockie Fitzgerald. Max Marshall. <laughs> uh, Blake Philpot. I'm saying. Uh, Josh Risley. Joshy in the crowd. And the coach, Adrian Goodwin. Now, I'd like to ask the captain to come back. Captains? Oh. Just tighten it up to a turn. Come forward, guys. Come forward. Our 2023 Barwicks S2JFL under 16.5 boys, Premiers, Clarence. So there it is, guys. Clarence are going to lift this Premiership Cup. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Let's join the broadcast forward. today. Thanks for tuning in. Jason Berry, final thoughts? Uh, wonderful working next to you, Bo. Great experience and a, a great game of football to watch. Clarence, the deserved premiers after that dominant performance today and, and great to see young Jasper Hay winning the award for best on ground. But it, was, it really was a team performance just then and watch them celebrate. Congratulations, Clarence, and well done to everyone involved in today's game. Under 18 grand final action up next on Saturday live from 9am. It's been a pleasure having you tune into the broadcast today. Congratulations to Clarence. Commiserations to North Hobart. We'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for joining. Bye for now. again goes backwards before they move forward one-on-one -on -one contest there it's Clarence picking it up top of the square and Clarence in a fantastic position Brody speed plays on goes around the body and speed makes no mistake and kicks the first one of today's clash Jeez, he that much support on so he's gonna have to do it himself to Shara his mark was hindered with but umpire sees it as a mark Cunningham's going to drill it inside, forward 50. Leading out there is Barwick. He's going to line up for goal number one for himself and his team. 
It's currently 117 to 000. You can look on the Mood Food replay here. It's a nice kick, a nice vision there from Cunningham, and Barwick takes a nice mark. So he's going to line up for his first. He's going to meander in here. Sets himself up. Kick's going to go on its way. Barwick's going to get the first for North Hobart. And it's a one. Looks across and sees Bricknell, who goes out wide. Volta turns around onto the left. Players up and in front. That was a fantastic mark by Barwick. He's causing some trouble up there. Played in front. Hands safely around the ball. You can see just here. So Bricknell, hands out. To check numbers there, it may have been Volta, same sort of body shape. And Barwick plays in front, just worked his way in front of Hay. Just said, didn't have the height on him, but had the body position and moved in front. He goes back looking for his second. And that is straight through the middle. And North Hobart take the lead. It's a around the mark, he's always at the bottom of the pack. Looks 25 metres out, strong lead. You send in a strong mark. Jai Millwood. I mentioned him before, really strong hands, and I I liked his kicking style last week. It was a little bit Kerno-esque. Just laid back on it. Let's have a look at this one. He finds that position. Was never going to drop that one. Looks strong. Good basketball hands. I don't know if he's a basketballer. We'll, make, we'll say that he is, though. Let's have a look at this approach. Moves in. He's probably 35 out. It's quite close to the man on the mark. Lays back and makes... No mistake of it, Clarence kicked the first of the next quarter. That is exactly what you would have told them to do, Bo, in that, four, that huddle before. 50 to that man's speed. So speed's going to line up for his second. It's going to take an almighty thump, but I reckon he might have it. We'll see on the Mood Food replay here, just the leading pattern that he used on that occasion. He had a good five metres on his opponent. So Speed's going to dance around, sell some candy, lines up the goals, Brody Speed for his second. Hey, just miss. Hey, it, lining up, going to have to kick this one 35, 40 metres, 45 degree angle. It's a nice approach, goes around the left foot, he's tugged that one across, but there is a nice mark taken again. What are they going to do about Jai Millwood? He just looks strong when the ball goes up aerially. Get ready to set up, boys. Very, very hard to beat. It was a, a miss kick, but he read it really well in Millwood. He found his way to the front of the pack and another mark. Going back for his opportunity to kick his third for the night, his Jai Millwood. 15 out, 45 degree angle. Makes no mistake, and Clarence surge further, further ahead. That puts them up. Strong tackle. See it as holding the ball, Jace. Nice little don't argue by Volta. But they argued and they tackled and they won the free kick. Ball moves forward. And is that that man's speed again? Yep. It is. And we are a few options. We'll form a pack and what a mark taken there from Philpot. They're going to go inside forward 50 again here. Clear up. He's met heavily there. Again in and under is Winch. Gets the hand pass away. Speed's lurking. Left foot kick speeds. And Millwood, that man, he's going to line up for four. This guy. Uh, come off. And a nice goal just then from Brody Speed. He's peppered the goals. I think he's hit, had three behinds in a row now. So it's nice for Speed to be able to go back and put that one through. Makes He's met. Can't. Getting... Can't get possession there is Marriott. And again, we'll see a quick hand pass out there from Bounds. Drilling kick inside forward, 50. Two on two here. Speed's going to get to the back of it. The speed is going to dribble one forward. That's his third goal there, Brody Speed. Just extends the margin out. So North Hobart need to try and pull back the bit of a, a bit of the ascendancy just here in Volta. He's going to do it all by himself. He goes from 35 out directly in front and puts that one through for North Hobart. That was much needed. Volta, Anthony Volta took them on. Goes around one, goes around two. There he is in the middle just there. So does the work early. Taps it to himself. Little short kick. 
Pretty much the only person that touched the ball in play just then was Anthony Volterbo. That was an outstanding piece of play. Yeah, it certainly was. What a pick up there and what a spot fire, or I should say fire starter to try and bring the year. That's uh, unfortunate for North Hobart. And more unfortunate is a little bit of undisciplined play just then that leads to a 50 metre penalty given and an easy goal just here from Watkins who's just going to march in. They don't even bother putting anyone on the mark. And he moves forward, which is disappointing for North Hobart. They've had the ascendancy in this last five or ten minutes. Yeah, look, I'm not quite sure about the call for the throw, but I guess we'll uh, umpires know more than, than we do up here. Certainly on the mood for a replay, it looked like it was a... Nice hand pass, but what can you do about it? You just have to in, boys. move on. So, 29. Goes long and finds Full Sang off the chest of Full Sang, though. Ball moves forward by Clarence. Devine attacking the ball hard. Player 43 with a nice pick up, and that was Winch. And a nice one handed mark akin by this man, Speed. Back here. Dual back here. up forward. Speed has been outstanding in this quarter. Clear out, boys. North over. Clear. Straight out. Nice, nice vision there, sorry for Jotty Wench. Absolutely. Beautiful pick up, nice vision. And Speed Nate makes no mistake of that one. 30 cells the candy. It was Cunningham who started it all off, I should say. Inside forward, 50 kick. Nice mark taken there, I think it was from Phil Pot. It wasn't, it was actually Jasper Hay. From Hay, so gonna go. McMullen again. Ball ripped off him. Nice bit of work just then by Cunningham at the bottom of the plaque. Umpires pick one out just then. I think it'll be a North Hobart free kick. A nice reward, reward for continued effort just then. This is Tashara. He's probably on a 45 degree angle. Looks for hands off. He sees Volta. He's kicked one from there already today and he puts this one through. Post height. Goal for Anthony Volta. And North Hobart stay with them. 31 point lead now to the home team in Clarence. For North Hobart have been absolutely fantastic. Beautifully picked up, I believe that was Speed. Finds a player on the inside in Garrett. Garrett takes his time, assesses options and finds a great option in Millwood. Jai Millwood this time. Will he go back and kick his fifth goal? I'll put you on the spot here. Jace, I like it. Millwood for the medal. Millwood second quarter for the medal. First Sheld. quarter, I like the way the players are thinking about how they're putting a player down to the ground. Just then Fitzgerald eased him down to the ground, doing a good job in the ruck there. Player number 42 for Clarence goes forward and it's Hay. Hay with a nice kick in Millwood's direction. Hands up, the big jukes go up and Millwood takes the gut, takes the mark. This is about his seventh attempt to kick his fifth goal just here. Got a feeling this time it's going to go straight through the high diddle diddle. John's been outstanding. A lot of work. A nice mark just then. No, he's incorrectly disposed of the ball. Goes back inside 50 for Clarence. The clock has resumed. Oh, and it is an absolute flyer from Millwood. The dying stages of this under 16.5 season. It's going to be the Clarence Roos leaping into Premiership glory. 52-point winners against North Hobart. 12-12-84 to 5-2-32. Thanks to the Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard. A convincing effort. Gallon in defeat North Hobart. But Clarence ultimately lifting up this cup. All thanks to a dominant second quarter, Jace. I think that's where the damage was done, wasn't it? Moving into that second quarter at the start of the third. That was a fantastic win from Clarence. They were the better team all day. North Hobart stuck with them. A couple of goals late in that first quarter to put them back in contention. But I think the forward entries in that first quarter probably should have had Clarence further in front. The more opportunities they got, the further in front they moved. Probably quite inaccurate at the end there for Clarence. 12-12 doesn't look that bad, but I think some of those behinds were probably fairly kickable for Clarence. But you can't complain when you win a grand final by 52 points. And that was an excellent team effort by Clarence. Leading goal kickers for the day, though. Who were they? Brody Speed, I think. Barwicks is a family-owned and operated, locally-based Tasmanian company. 
we've been producing and delivering quality landscaping materials to Tasmanians for 40 years. Composting organics is a key part of our operation. But Southern Tasmania needs more modern organic recycling facilities. So we're excited to announce that we have been awarded grants from the state and federal governments that will enable us to expand that side of our business. We plan to use this grant funding to contribute towards building a new high-tech composting facility on our site, located in the Norsky Skoog precinct at Boya in the Derwent Valley, where we've been processing pine bark for more than 10 years. What are the benefits of composting? In 2020, nearly 170,000 tonnes of Tasmanian organic waste were sent to landfill. where it produces large volumes of potent greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide. All that organic material, we don't think of it as waste because the end product is so useful. Every kilogram of it could be turned into valuable compost. With huge benefits for Tasmanian soil and the farmers and gardeners who rely on that soil for their produce and crops. Our vision is to use our existing building located next to Norsky Skoog at Boya and convert it into a composting facility that uses in-vessel composting. That's IVC, technology to ensure our composting is safe and bad odour free. Some of the key features of IVC are Composting occurs in enclosed tunnels with negative air pressure. No odour can escape. All water is captured and reused. No water is released. Temperature, humidity and air circulation are all closely monitored. Building an IVC facility is also highly regulated. We will be working through an extensive external permit and building approval process with Council, the EPA, independent experts and civil contractors to make sure all stages of the project are carefully managed and independently assessed to the highest standard. The operation of the facility will also be carefully controlled. We ensure that organic material is delivered and received safely, with any liquid runoff captured. The IVC process generates heat up to 85 degrees, which pasteurises the compost, killing weed seeds and destroying harmful bacteria like salmonella. The compost goes through a second IVC process to create the finished material. The end product is independently tested and must meet Australian industry standard 4454 2012. We can't wait to make this happen. Making high quality compost products is one of the things we do at Barwix and having a modern local composting facility that can handle larger volumes of organic material and stop it being dumped as waste in landfill is a win for councils, farmers, businesses and all southern Tasmanians. This project has been made possible through grant funding. BG and JM Barwick Proprietary Limited is supported by the Tasmanian Government and the Federal Government's Food Waste for Healthy Soils Fund. For more information, please visit the FAQ section on this website and fill out a feedback form.